For a little while there, it almost felt like the hurricane season ghosted us all together. September 10th came and went, which is the calendar-derived peak of the hurricane season, where we should be popping out there across the Atlantic Basin. But yet today is September 16th, and we still have not seen a named storm develop out there across the tropics. Ever since Fairnan spun up and away in the North Atlantic and petered off, never to be heard from again. For a while there, it had been predominantly quiet. Now, National Hurricane Center's homepage, the outlook here you could see as of this morning at 8 o'clock, we have an active invest with a 90-90 split that this thing is imminently expected to develop. It's looking really healthy there on Saturday satellite image as well. And then we have a newly highlighted tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa with the traditional 0 for 20 split. No chance of development over the next two days and then 20% over the next seven days. So we're starting to kind of get on the up and up, but even all things considered, we have two features on the board, a named storm likely coming, but still in comparison to years prior, where are all the storms? Well, I want to talk to you about that today. Obviously, the chart is starting to get a little cluttered, and we do have an active invest out there, and we don't want to ignore it. This is definitely one of our more healthier invests that we've seen in a little while now you can see the fanning out of the upper level clouds on the west and northern sides of this system shows it's got a really good set of lungs on it we have really good thunderstorms and upward motion down in the lower levels of the environment and those wispy clouds it's called transverse banding the feathery extensions that you'd see on the tail end of like a duck or a turkey or a peacock those clouds coming out on all sides of it there that indicates we have really good rising motion focusing in the center of this developing area of low pressure. And I want to say within the next 24 hours, maybe 36 max, we'll finally have our next tropical depression hit the fray, and then we'll be off to the races with Gabrielle finally joining us. On the plus side to this whole conglomerate here we do have another system forming obviously that tends to be a little tense for a lot of us out there if you look at the latest spaghetti models and these have been locked in we're expecting a little nudge from an upper level low to the immediate north of this system. And as a result, it's going to get tugged north of our lesser Antilles and our friends in the greater Antilles and should avoid the Caribbean altogether. From there, as it starts to level out on a more westerly path north of the Caribbean, eventually before it gets to the same longitude line as Bermuda, we're expecting another turn towards the north. These upper level lows have more or less been a safe even grace for much of the hurricane season, not only the month of September, but even August. It was an upper level low in the right place at the right time that helped give Hurricane Aaron, or I should say developing Aaron, a little nudge towards the north, and that's what helped it avoid moving into the Caribbean and potentially towards the United States. So we have that going for us, and then after that, I want us to marinate on the satellite a little bit. I'll get myself out of the way so we can all take this in. Even though the Atlantic has been faced with several hostile mechanisms out there, not only for the climatological peak of the season, but pretty much the entirety of this calendar year. We had higher than normal pressures and something called a positive North Atlantic oscillation settle in during the late winter months earlier this year and then through much of the spring. Traditionally, that's a significant rule of thumb to suggest we may actually have a bit of a lesser hurricane season. And you know, during the springtime is usually when we start to see those pre-seasonal outlooks begin to roll out. And across the board, the unanimous statement was above average. We're falling behind that very, very quickly. If you look across the Atlantic, though, it does seem a little cluttered. To the north of where our tropical wave train is currently positioned, we have one moving north of the Lesser Antilles right now. I'll stop the analysis here. I'll stop the loop so I can do some doodling with everybody, one of my favorite parts. We have one tropical wave right in through here. This is 92L, looking very good. Front and center, the satellite image there, definitely starting to get that, quote, look, as we all like to say in tropical meteorology. Then we have one meandering off the west coast of Africa now, and then one back behind that. To tell you the truth, the one that is currently highlighted by National Hurricane Center, this feature here, it's probably going to meet a similar demise to prior 91L, if you all recall, that tropical wave that had a ton of model agreement, 
ton of confidence that this would become Gabrielle, and then all of a sudden, at the snap of a finger, someone turned off the lights, and that thing disappeared. It's the one behind our current area of interest, the 0 for 20 yellow blip out there. I do think we'll have to kind of pay attention to. That one seems to have a higher vote of confidence, not only in our computer models, but with the overall background state of the environment. It does look to win that tropical lottery, as I like to say, and I'll show you why right here. I'm calling this the dry air funnel. It's been a struggle we've had for much of July, August, and it is expected to persist through September. If you watch what happens, right now we've got a large area of dry air extending down like so from the northeast towards the southwest. This is called a tropical upper tropospheric trough. You all out there at home can call it a tut. Good old Tut, kind of like King Tut way, way back when. Think of the Tut. That's what this is called. And usually what this involves is a dumping of dry, stable air from up north and a lot of wind shear that tends to wrap around the base of this Tut, helping to reduce any kind of tropical development out there in the Atlantic. So let me clear my fun doodle and we'll fast forward from this morning out about another seven or so days. Look what happens. Bam. Another dump of dry, stable air from up north, the mid-latitudes where our jet stream should be found. It makes its way all the way as far south as the tropics. So in between where that dry air has now extended down, our current area of interest, the over 20, should be somewhere in here. And notice there's really not much of an indication of anything spinning. Behind it, however, is that next wave. Hashtag next wave has been kind of symbolic for this hurricane season. This one seems to be right in between the dumping of dry air and additional wind shear, and that one could have a better opportunity to get spinning. On top of that, finally, we've got something called the MJO. I have an article on ClickOrlando.com. I like to link it to all future updates and articles as well so you can refresh yourselves. We have a pulse coming across the tropics, hung up in the eastern Pacific right now. But as it comes across, it's going to give us a bit of a nudge in terms of our favorability. Notice that's a buzzword of mine. <laughs> It's going to give us a bit of help in the favorability department and get a little bit extra moisture out there, help us get some more lift off the ground, produce some additional thunderstorms out there. And I do also think that's what's going to help that next upcoming wave develop. So we'll have to wait and see. All in all, September can very easily, even from the 16th out to the end, produce another two to five named storms. It's just a matter of whether or not Mother Nature is going to allow these upcoming tropical waves to win that metaphorical tropical lottery.